I've recently been trying to organize the finds in Antarctica for a year-end video showing the best of, so to speak. And in that process, I decided to create the image on the left. Five distinct locations that aren't hard to find, and of course, down in the description box, I will give you the location for each of those five places. Each of them very clearly shows the head of what looks like a dragon-like creature. Now, given that that's occurred five times, and in today's video later on, I'm going to show you a sixth. When you put that up next to this 15th century map of a region very near to Antarctica that shows a giant winged serpent dragon chasing a giant, I think that pretty much puts to bed any idea that this could just be Apophenia or Pareidolia. There's only so many times that that argument will work. And in the images on the left, we see them in completely different lights, in completely different regions. One, to my mind, the center one looks like it might be a carving. The one in the upper left, though, however, I do believe is living. The one in the lower left, I think, is a fossil. The one in the upper right, I think, might be um, some type of a carving or a statue, but the one in the lower right, I'm not sure. But I do know what each of them stands for, and when I show you the sixth one today, I think it's probably going to, even the most skeptical naysayer, is going to have to either make the admission that maybe history isn't what we believe it is, or something very, very different is happening in Antarctica. Especially on the right, I'm not sure how anyone could look at that map and see that image and mistake it for anything other than what we found. The two things correlate, ancient history and what we're looking at. And this might be one of those things that, uh, I love the naysayers that talk about how they want to disprove NASA, how they can't um, trust NASA because of all of the evidence of their lies. All of the evidence of their lies are the result of looking at NASA footage. Think about that for a minute. Debunking NASA by using NASA footage, but then coming to my videos and saying that because I'm using Google Earth Pro, the imagery can't be trusted. It's it's hilarious. It really is. The, uh, the lack of logic there. So, if I could have one legacy for this channel, though, it wouldn't be the things I found. It would be the things that people who came to my channel and shared with me their finds. And in the future, all of the people that will take the time to go look at this, that will be the true legacy of this. People looking for things that I've never met, I don't know who they are, who knows might, who might see what thing in the future, and then simply because of the attention to detail on this, that they might be able to um, reveal something that might not have been. Anyway, without any further delay, though. Now, this particular find is very near to one that was brought to me by another viewer. The viewer goes by the name of Nevada Geologist, I believe. And here you can very clearly see, you have the eye socket here. It's a skull. You have the upper jaw. You have the lower jaw. And once again, looking closely, you can even see the teeth that remain in this skull. Now, the, the pin location that Nevada geologist left was kind of general. There's a lot of things in this region. I'm not sure exactly what the person was sharing, but let me tell you what I think might be what was closest to the pin. I'll put it that way. 
looking very closely right here at this hole, this cave in the ice, we see something coming out of the water. Now, the first thing I know a lot of people will say, because it was my first thought, oh, look, somebody caught an image of a leopard seal. Now, leopard seals are big, nasty, mean aquatic creatures. Don't get me wrong, you would not want to meet one. It would be your end. But here's the problem with that. Using the ruler, when we measure this particular creature, and this is, of course, using the, the path feature so we can measure curved, from this thing's nose down to what we can see its tail is 50 feet. 15 meters. That is orders of magnitude far larger than any leopard seal that's ever been found. If I th remember right, I think there may be 8 to 10 feet, maybe a little bit bigger. This thing is five times that size. And it's pretty clear. I mean, when you see the head of this, where it is, the shape of the body, it's something like that for sure. But what? I, I just think it's something that science hasn't found yet. And it looks like it might be chasing something up on the ice. Because we have something here, and then something farther up here. Now this is also a region that we're very familiar with because we found many other things. But once again, to go back to the skull, I think Nevada geologist had said he thought he saw something buried in the ice. Maybe this is it. I'm not sure. But the pin was closer to that thing, so I thought I would share it. This is the region where, I'm not sure if any of you remember, it was a week or two ago, we found this weird, what looks like a platform with horns on it. And anybody, anybody from the south, if they saw this head, would know exactly what this was representing. I mean, this shapes like this just don't mistakenly occur. This is very clearly the head of some alligator crocodilian type creature a creation of it sure statuary some ancient you know maybe it's a fossil i don't know i mean i've never seen a white one but there's a lot of things i've seen in antarctica that i've never seen before and also here this very clear creation of some type of a simian face. It's, it's some hybrid because there's really no way to mistake it for anything else. So there's also one other thing I would like to cover at the end of this video. Yesterday, third phase of moon pardon me, third phase of moon, put out a video. They had found something, and it is one of the best finds I've ever seen. It's way up here on the Bridgman Islands, about as close to South America as you can get. Now, it's in historical imagery, which is, once again, one of the best tools that you can use. Now, when we look at this, it's clearly a cave right off the coast. And they go through the measurements um, 250 by 250, roughly the opening here, feet, which is roughly, if I'm going to do my math right here, about 80 meters, 75 meters high, 75 meters wide. But here's the, the kicker. Here's the one thing, and I don't blame them for this, that they missed. Now, this is, of course... 2019, 2010, they imaged this cave 
three times in a very short span. This is February 10, 2007. Now, this is January 20, 2007. You can't see anything. This is January 18, 2007. So, January 18, January 20, and February 10th. Now, what they kind of missed here was they were using primarily the January 18 image. Looking closely. A couple more scrolls in, and if you look here to the left, what looks like just a patch of snow isn't a patch of snow. Because if you go forward to the February image, you can very clearly see that this cave is occupied by a dragon. You can see the lower jaw here, the mouth. You can see the upper jaw. You can see the horn right behind the eyes, right here. It's very easy to see at this zoom level. I don't blame Third Phase of Moon for missing this. They didn't cover it. When I And let me make this admission. When I find something like this, I get tunnel vision too. I miss a lot of details and people come to me and say, yeah, you found this great thing, but you missed this ABC thing other around it. And I'll go back and look and like, yep, I sure did. It's just kind of uh, the the part that, it's, it's hard. You just have to accept it. And that's why you have to go back and look at things over and over and over again. But there's no way anybody's ever going to convince me that this is natural. These are steps. This is some type of a created cave that leads right out to the sea. And there are some kind of strange artifacts out in the sea, very near this. Not really sure what this is, um, but something's definitely under the waves right there. But yeah, Bridgman Islands, um, third phase of Moon nailed it. They, they're they the ones that nailed that uh, giant face that we'd found. Um, they are a, a really great source of this kind of find. And uh, great work. Nothing but great work. And and like I said, that historical imagery up here in the upper left, I've tried to keep this in screen right here. There's a little box you can click. It has a little clock in it with a little arrow that's moving counterclockwise. And you can click it. And then for the regions, they, they vary. Sometimes you'll have a ton of lines where you can see images from, you know, two or three images a year going back all the way to the, the 80s. Sometimes you'll just have one. But when you see, and for those of you that are doing your homework on this, when you see images that are very close together, like in this case, we see them in the span of less than a month. Because we have the 18th of January, the 20th of January, and the 10th of February. So that's what, 30, 23 days? They high res imaged this area three times in 23 days. Why? And, well, you have your answer. This is why. So I guess we could call this yet even a seventh dragon, because I really don't know how anyone can, can deny this. Because you don't see this anywhere else. And I'll bring this up just to leave with it just so people can understand how many times we found this and in how many different places. It's completely undeniable now. The reason they're hiding it is, I think, starting to become much more apparent. There is evidence of an ancient civilization down here that will rewrite history. And it will reveal things that the powers that be don't want revealed. Not to people like you and me, because it would take away their ability to manipulate us. It would give us the ability to think for ourselves again. And 
when governments lose that ability, that's when things get bad. Especially the corporatists. It's another video for another day. But I will just leave this image up and let you guys make up your own mind as to whether it's apophenia and pareidolia or not. Like, share, subscribe.